all of creation cries out to God in that frequency. I've talked about Pastor Mark Taylor before, famed conspiracy theorist. We've got so many things going on, uh, whether it's the foods we eat, the, the, the chemtrails, uh, the, all the spraying. Pastor. God says specifically in his word, do not touch my anointed, but especially my prophets. And Trump supporter. President Trump and his four-year tenure here, now there's certain things that have to be done in order for, you know, uh, to take down the corporation, if that's what he's doing, you know what I mean? So there's been a lot of talk about that, that's what he is in fact doing. But I haven't gone in depth about who the dude is. Where'd he come from? What's he believe? How'd he get famous? Let's get into it. Mark Taylor, known as the Firefighter Prophet, rose to fame when he became the subject of a documentary, which then got made into a movie called The Trump Prophecy, produced by students and faculty of Liberty University last year, while Jerry Falwell Jr. was still the president. It spread like wildfire, if you will, excuse the pun, among evangelicals and other Christian extremists. Mark Taylor claims that God revealed a prophecy to him. According to the Daily Beast expose on the whole thing, article linked in the description if you're curious, he was a retired fire firefighter, and he was sleeping with Fox News on in the background, back in 2011. It also just so happened to be a segment where they had Donald Trump on as a guest. Mark Taylor said he heard a voice coming from the TV, but it wasn't Donald Trump's voice, it was God's voice. God said to Taylor, I have chosen this man, Donald Trump, for such a time as this. For as Benjamin Netanyahu is to Israel, so shall this man be to the United States of America. Well, that's kind of strange. First of all, Netanyahu is just the Israeli prime minister, isn't he? In fact, I think he's pretty right-wing and extreme, and Israelis don't really tend to like him very much. He said some pretty extreme stuff, and if memory serves, I think the dude's in some legal trouble right now, too. Christians have some weird thing for Israel anyways. So after Mark Taylor heard this prophecy from God himself, he said he felt sure that Trump would run against Obama and win the White House in 2012. Middle, 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 Trump didn't even run. Surprise, he was wrong. How does he explain that? Well, when Trump finally did run in 2016, Taylor came back and said God only let Obama win so that America would build up a righteous anger for Trump's eventual presidential bid. Honestly, Trump had been talking about politics for a while at that point and even mentioned running for president, so it wasn't hard to guess that he'd throw his hat in the ring at some point. He got it wrong, plain and simple. You can't make a broad gesturing guess about something and then call it a prophecy when the broad gesturing guess turned out to be kind of true. So anyways, that's how the dude got famous. Basically, the Liberty University film department decided to make a movie about him and turned him into some kind of ridiculous prophet. And like the movie God's Not Dead, nobody gave a shit about it or even knew it existed except a small group of extremists. But within that small group of a few million people, maybe more, it caught fire. Again, pun intended. So let's take a look at some of the stranger shit the dude said. Here's the first clip. I want to put this warning out yeah. because God says specifically in his word, do not touch my anointed, but especially my prophets. Right. Now, here's what I want to warn people about. Mm -hmm. Well, they get on here on Facebook or social media, and they start tapping away. Yeah. And what they don't understand, Josh, is that God's going to hold them accountable. Back in biblical times, if they attack someone verbally, maybe a couple hundred people would know it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But the second you hit that enter button now, mm -hmm. it's going worldwide. That's right. Think of the implications of that. Now, when you're attacking that individual, so God's going to hold you accountable. So before you tap on that enter button, you better think twice and pray and ask the Lord, hey, is this something I need to be putting out there for the entire world to see? Because right now, literally, you're going to be putting your life in your own hands at this point. Oh, yes. This is definitely something I want to press the enter button on. I know I'm risking God's ire by putting this video out, but I think it's worth it. And for the record, I love how he considers himself an anointed prophet and tries to hide behind God to defend him from criticism. I guess you are aren't allowed to criticize somebody's crazy beliefs if they believe in God, or if they believe they're God's prophets. That mindset sounds familiar, doesn't it? Who do we know that thinks like that? Oh yeah, every cult leader ever. I guess if I wanted to get more specific, I could say the governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses. They're pretty famous for that position. By the way, before I play the next clip, I want to mention a couple things. If you've heard this before, then skip forward 40 seconds. If you're on a desktop, press the L key four times. If you like the work I do and you want to see me continue to do it, you can support me in a few ways. First, there's Patreon. That's probably the best way. But if you want to get something back for your support, you can check out my Etsy store. I sell all kinds of interesting stuff on there, including dumpster fire candle holders, 
barriers, no trespassing signs for Jehovah's Witnesses, and all kinds of other stuff. I also just started a nonprofit organization to help survivors of shunning at the hands of cult member friends and family. I have another YouTube channel, and all profits from it go straight to the nonprofit. To read more about it, check the website, apostaterefuge.org. Links to the shop and the Patreon are in the description too. Okay, let's take a look at the next clip. Everything in life gives off a frequency. Uh, you know, the clothes I'm wearing, uh, you know, whatever, the carpet in the, ha in the room, the, the, the trees, the grass. That's why the Bible says when no one else will, the rocks will cry out to me. Because mm -hmm. all of creation cries out to God in that frequency. What? Who told you that? Who told you everything has a frequency? What do you think a frequency is? Can we break this down a little bit? When he says frequency, I assume he means like a wave, right? Like when you talk, you vibrate the air at a certain frequency, which changes the pitch and volume and everything. What are the rocks using to produce a frequency? This doesn't make any sense at all. It sounds like some spirit science shit or teal swan, just woo bullshit that has no tether to reality. All of creation cries out to God in that frequency. They're actually worshiping, I believe it's actually worshiping God, grace and worship. Creation worshiping itself, God. yeah. Creation itself, I mean, yeah. you know, the trees, the, the rocks, whatever the case may be, everything he's created. Because yeah, we're created to worship, you know. That's why Satan creates so, a new frequency to try to control To combat us. that, to block that. Listen to this fucking asshole. Actually worshiping God, grace and worship. Creation itself, God. yeah. Creation itself. Encouraging this dude's delusion. What is happening right now? What's he mean by that's why Satan creates a new frequency to try to control us? What does that mean? It's complete nonsense. And they say it with such confidence. These people do not live in the same reality as us. And the problem is, is that once we come so far generationally, We've got so many things going on, uh, whether it's the foods we eat, the, the, the chemtrails, uh, the, all the spraying. Whoa, we've hit crazy town. If I thought we were there already, we are definitely there now. Chemtrails, I love it. I can't imagine anybody in my audience hasn't heard this before, but just in case, let me explain this. It's a very old conspiracy theory. It's on par with the flat earth conspiracy. The idea is that airplanes fly around and vent mind control chemicals to create a docile population. They show very convincing pictures of planes leaving trails behind them and everything. There are a lot of problems with this conspiracy, not least of which is the fact that chemicals dissipate into the atmosphere fairly quickly. How would the leaders orchestrating this whole thing protect themselves from the chemicals? How would they manage to keep it in the US? You think the rest of the world would put up with it? But they have a clever explanation for all of it. The explanations usually work for that specific narrative, but don't have cohesion with the rest of their claims. Like the whole flat earth thing. Yes, they can raise questions about some specific things and explain others but when you try to fit it all together none of it makes sense let's continue uh is to detract us from hearing god's frequency because mm -hmm. when you think about it they're spraying aluminum and barium uh in, in the chemtrails and if you look on the periodic table barium and aluminum the uh, barium is ba aluminum is al spells bail no Whoa, coincidence wow no coincidence that's deep that's deep. That's no coincidence. Yeah. So when you look at this... I wonder if this guy thinks he's completely full of shit. Wow, that's deep. That is hilarious. I think he's playing him for the fool that he is right now. What possible use could it be to give people aluminum and barium? Is it solely because the initials on the periodic table spell out B-A-A-L, bail? What if the periodic table creators had given barium the abbreviation B-M and they gave gold the B-A abbreviation? Would they be spreading gold and aluminum instead? Is it some kind of demonic possession that's driving them to use the chemicals that spell out bail? What the fuck is this dude talking about? This is fucking bizarre. Rick, we are literally walking antennas mm -hmm. because we've been breathing the aluminum. We've been breathing the, the, the barium. It's, it's saturated all the foliage. This is why you had the fires out there in California. Was, they said these, these guys out there were saying these fires were literally exploding. They couldn't yeah. control them. Mm -hmm. That's why is because bar aluminum itself will burn at 1,200 degrees. Mm -hmm. So this, the foliage has been saturated with this stuff. So when you look at everything that we're eating, the heavy metals, toxicity that everyone has, we are literally giant antennas which was intended. Okay, coming back to exploding trees. I have to imagine that was hyperbole, but if it wasn't, I'm sure there was a better explanation than that. Just because aluminum's melting point, not combustion point, like he's talking about here, is 1200 degrees, doesn't mean there's aluminum and barium all through the trees because of chemtrails. Honestly, I'm not even sure how to respond to all this nonsense, but for the record, aluminum's combustion point, when in a mixture with oxygen, is actually 2535 degrees Celsius, or about 4600 degrees Fahrenheit. 
That's fucking hot. But honestly, what he's doing here is making an objective claim. Either what he's saying is true, or it isn't. Either planes are spreading barium and aluminum all over the place, or they're not. We can test for this. We can test to find out if there were exploding trees as a direct result of massive amounts of barium and aluminum in them. But guess what he hasn't provided a shred of? Evidence, as usual. He's a Christian extremist. Why would I expect any differently? So if you want to get really deep on this, these entities that the, the devil uh, has put down here that these Satanists worship or, you know, uh, tap into for this knowledge, if you will, they've told them how to do this stuff. Mm -hmm. They've showed them how to do this stuff for decades. I mean, for thousands of years, but they've tapped into this stuff of how to clog up man's ears and eyes and be able to sense and feel God every time you're walking around. So now he's saying that entities, aka demons, have been teaching the Satanists how to run the government, to turn off the frequency that lets people talk to God. Wow, dude, I'm kind of speechless. I didn't read that part of the Bible. I just have one question for him. How'd he find all this out, and how'd he manage to protect himself from it? I'll tell you how most people protect themselves from this kind of thing when they buy into this conspiracy theory. Tinfoil hats. Seriously, that's where the meme came from, this conspiracy theory. Is his frequency all clogged up too? These people are nutbags. There's really no other way to describe it. And sadly, they steer the ship that is the US government. Seriously, he is renowned among members of the evangelical voting bloc. They listen to him, and no Republican politician can win an election without winning their vote. They call the shots in many respects. They are responsible for bringing progress to a halt in this country. Jerry Falwell Sr., Billy Graham, and lots of others in the 70s, 80s, and 90s set their minds to acquiring power, so they pushed their congregations into politics. And it worked. Now, televangelism and a lot of religious services are nothing more than veiled political rallies for the Republican Party. And as a result, they are making this a worse place to live for countless people, including themselves. I don't know what we're going to do about it, but eventually these insane ideas are going to have to be grappled with. Anyways, that's all I've got for you. If you like what I do and you want to see me continue to do it, you can support me in a few ways. First, there's Patreon. That's probably the best way. But if you want to get something back for your support, you can check me out on Teespring, or you can check me out on Etsy. I have a store where I sell all kinds of interesting stuff. Mostly it's 3D printed game stands. But I also sell these 2020 dumpster fire candle holders, or just regular dumpster fire candle holders. And I sell these signs. If you want to keep Jehovah's Witnesses or Mormons from knocking on your door, put these out front. Jehovah's Witnesses aren't afraid of anything, except apostates. And you don't have to be an ex-Jehovah's Witness to be an apostate. The term applies to anybody critical of the religion. So if you want to keep them away, then consider getting one of these signs. All links can be found in the description and the pinned comment. Okay, thanks for watching guys.